Yo, welcome to the one and only award-winning Mikey podcast. This show is a wild ride through the news, true crime, real-life stories, conspiracies, and so much more. It's really just a deep dive into the latest current events and weird stuff that's happening on the internet. And today, I want to tell you about a new directive that was quietly slipped into the Defense Department's playbook just days before what is probably going to be one of the most important elections of our time. Now, you're probably thinking right now, like, well, whatever, who cares? It's not that big of a deal. This sounds super boring, whatever. Why should I care? Well, when you dig in, you realize that this is a little bit more than just some boring old government bullcrap, okay? It's got a lot to say about when and how our government might use lethal force on U.S. soil and against U.S. civilians, all right? So what I'm about to tell you is actually pretty bad, and the timing couldn't be more suspicious. So grab a drink, a smoke, coffee, and your Mikey Podcast coffee mug because that makes your coffee taste so much better. You can find those at MikeyPodcast.com, and it's a great way to support the show. Fill it up and sit back because I'm about to break all this down for you and what you're about to learn might change how you look at the next few days. All sight, please stand by channel one. Communication, switching to channel one. All right, here it comes. Be ready. Switch control to manual override. Awaiting confirmation of the video feed. Countdown is running at five, four, Mikey Podcast. All right, before we get started, don't forget to head on over to MikeyPodcast.com or right on Spotify and join the sub club to support independent media and to help keep this podcast going and to help keep it free for everybody who needs it. All right, so let's get to the guts of this damn thing it's dod directive 5240.01 which sounds like the most boring thing you've ever heard in your life it sounds like a dry read right it's something that you would just you wouldn't even look twice at like it's the type of thing that if you're scrolling on social media you scroll right past it and you look at it and you read it like my god that sounds awful and it's putting me to sleep i'm bored already well it's not really that boring all right, it's it's really sort of a, a doomsday movie script hidden under a boring bureaucratic title. All right, it's officially called the Defense Intelligent Agency Activities. Uh, well, I'm sorry, the D- Defense Intelligence Agency Activities, if I could only read. Uh, and it's supposedly a policy guide for how the DIA, yes, the same government agency that's supposed to be keeping an eye on foreign threats, conducts intelligence operations. And I'm not talking about gathering intel and on potential terrorists or terrorist attacks or even cyber spy games. No, no, no. This touches right here on American soil, on our own land, in our own backyard. And that's where things get interesting. Now, let me quickly clear up what this directive actually is. At its core, DOD Directive 5240.01 is meant to provide a rule book for how the Defense Intelligence Agency operates within the U.S., especially when supporting civilian law enforcement. So far, sounds pretty standard. It's oversight, privacy protections, making sure everything's within the bounds of the law, you know, all that stuff that protects us from a tyrannical government. But here's the part they don't want you to notice. This directive specifically mentions scenarios where the DIA might have to provide intelligence support, support that could potentially involve the use of force on U.S. citizens. And yes, that includes lethal force. So we have to unpack this whole thing, because when the Internet got wind of this, it was was just a, a week and a half ago, people lost their damn minds. And honestly, I don't blame them. Now, of course, the Department of Defense has been scrambling to do some damage control on this whole thing. They're out here saying, hey, this directive doesn't actually mean the military can just start shooting at civilians. They're trying to frame it as this is all about helping out in extreme situations, terrorist attacks, uh, threats to national security, that sort of thing. You know, they want you to think that this is all under control and this is just a routine privacy or I'm sorry, routine policy update. And there's really nothing to worry about here. But. (laughs) Is that really the case ever with the government? Let's get real here for a second. If it's so routine, why the hell did they roll this out less than two weeks before an election that's already got tensions at a boiling point? Dude, people are on edge, okay? It sort of just feels like we're all just waiting for something to happen. 
and they want us to believe that this directive doesn't change the rules on lethal force? Sure, Jan. So, uh, since since this is since they've been getting called out online on this whole thing, uh, they've had really no choice but to admit the fact that it does allow for scenarios where the military uh, military personnel could potentially use deadly force if they're supporting civilian law enforcement and if there's an, an immediate threat. Now, that's kind of a lot of ifs, right? You know, and, and we all know how those conditions can be stretched when things get a little chaotic. And I'm talking about the kind of legal loopholes here that when push comes to shove, they can use a technicality to, to justify a whole lot more or really anything they want. Think about it for a second, okay? If protests break out, shit, let's be honest here, if riots break out, because let's say, you know, Trump wins the election and the left decides that 2020 was just a practice round, or Harris wins and the MAGA crowd completely loses their collective shit, let's just say in the middle of all this chaos, law enforcement is getting a bit overwhelmed. The local cops can't keep up. The National Guard gets called in, but things continue to keep escalating. Suddenly, military intelligence steps in to help, you know, sort of coordinate efforts. So now what do we have? We have the military actively supporting local law enforcement. Now listen, people, I know this sounds a little far-fetched, and it's actually not that far-fetched, and maybe I sound a bit paranoid here, but hear me out, okay? As we continue this creative picture on our minds, add this to the situation. Maybe there's a protester, so let's say just a, just a couple of pissed off protesters with a gun, and they start shooting up in the air or even shooting at the police, God forbid. Under this directive, if the military is there to assist and that shooter is deemed an imminent threat, well, it's not really off the table for them to take le lethal action on this guy, take the guy out. Okay. Now, I'm not saying they shouldn't shoot the guy. I mean, the hell, if, if, if he's a clear threat to their lives, I'm just, what I'm saying here is that this directive, regardless of the reason, allows for the military to kill civilians on U.S. soil. Yeah, I'm sure. I, and yeah, they're going to say that, it, that it's an extreme case and whatever. They'll tell you it's only for extreme cases. That's fine. They'll say that there's a whole approval process that the Secretary of Defense would have to, to give the OK and that it's all monitored. Really, though, tell me, how fast do you think that those decisions get made when shit's about to get crazy, when someone's shooting at you? OK, in a situation like that, you know, those decisions are getting way less thoughtful and more reactive. All right. Now, with all that in mind, let's talk about why the timing of this thing is, is sketchy as hell. OK, this directive has actually been around in various forms for a long time. Sure. Uh, but this latest update, adding language about force and intelligence support comes now when we're just days away from what's likely to be one of the most contested elections in American history. Think about it. They're prepping for something. They're planning something. They might know something or they're thinking something could happen. And it's not a stretch to think that they're getting ready for the possibility of nationwide unrest. They've 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 sort of been preparing for it for the past couple of years. Remember 2020? The protests, the clashes, it was total chaos. So, and, and I know that was that was a little different, but not really. Okay, now, look, if you believe the spin on this whole thing, the directive is just them making sure they're ready to assist if things get out of hand again. But I think it's a little bit more than that. I think it's them saying, hey, we need to make sure we have all our bases covered in case the streets get a little too wild. And they don't want you thinking about how that whole thing might play out. They'd rather you stay focused on whatever drama's trending on social media that they, or, or, you know, whatever Trump said or whatever... Kamala Lama Ding Dong is doing now. You know what I mean? They they want you to, but this isn't, but it isn't working because the internet is asking questions. We're asking questions. Here we are right now asking the questions they hope that we would ignore. All right. So we got to dive a little bit deeper into to this whole thing and into the legal side of it. Is it legal for them to even do this? Because this is where things get a little bit confusing. It's the there, there's this thing called the posse comma I don't know if I'm saying this right, the posse comatatus. Act, comma titus, comma 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 dumma comma dumma comma blah 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 blah. Whatever the posse comma titus act, comma titus act, comma tutus. I don't know why I keep saying that, but whatever. You get the point. It's that thing. It exists. You want to Google it? Go for it. It's a real thing. 
All right. It's an old law that is supposed to keep the military from acting like cops. OK, it still applies right now to this day and to everything that's going on in the world right now. Technically here in America, it still applies. All right. But there are exceptions. And that's the key word that we should be a little bit worried about exceptions okay if congress or the president decides that a situation is serious enough they can basically waive all the restrictions in the commie come up the, the posse comitatus act uh and with this directive this new directive in the new language the dod is just making sure that they've got the paperwork ready if it comes to that okay they'll tell you that the military can't just roll into a city and start taking people out and sure on paper that's true but this directive is a safety net for them OK, it's set. It's a set of rules that says, OK, if things get can go completely sideways, we need to get involved. Here's how we'll do it. Now, no, it's not a blank check for the military to take over, but it's definitely not comforting reassurance that they won't and that they they it's not really the the, the it's not really what they want us to believe it is really. I don't know how many times I've got to say really, but I did. I said it a bunch. Really, it is. It is not what they want us to believe it is. It's not the comforting reassurance that they they try to tell us it is. Okay. It's like when your company brings in a consultant, you know, and and, and the consultant then interviews everybody about their jobs or whatever. It's like, what do you do? Blah, 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 whatever. The boss says, oh, it's all good. Don't worry about it. We're just updating employee job descriptions. It's nothing to worry about. Okay. Yeah, right. Next thing you know, you're fired. But so, so you're sitting here like, okay, well, what does this mean for me? You know, I'm like, why are you telling me all this? But well, this is really just the part where I tell you how you can deal with it, you know, and, and, and let's not get this whole thing twisted. We, we can't control what the government is up to. They're going to do what they're going to do, but we can, we can sure as hell control how we respond to these types of things. You know, first of all, we need to understand that there's a really good chance that shit is going to go down. Okay. There's a really good chance that it could get ugly. And we need to be prepared for that, all right? And you need to understand that they've been preparing for that. That's why this language exists in this directive. That's why they've been planning for possible, I mean, that's why they're talking about it. Like if you if you get on X or if you look on the news right now on social media, they're, they're literally saying that there's there could be civil unrest no matter which way the election goes. It's almost as if they're just saying, yeah, no, it's going to happen. Get ready. So the best thing you can do, one of the first things you can do is this shit starts going, is don't panic. Just chill out. Just kind of relax a little bit. You know, like it is what it is. They, they, they want you to panic. They want you to be scared. They, because, because scared people, panicky people, confused people, they're easier to control and they want to be able to control you. All right. But don't, so you have to you have to stay calm all right and, and but don't hide from everything or pretend like nothing has happened pay attention you know pay attention to what's going on be aware of what's going on be aware of what's going on around you be aware of what's going on in your neighborhood what are your neighbors doing you know what are your local officials doing and pay attention to how they react to all this stuff and how they're handling things because really if if shit pops off they're going to be the first line of response Next thing you can do is think about your own situation. Are you stocked up on essentials? And I'm not talking about like doomsday prepper stuff here, which you, which is fine if you want to be that way. There's nothing wrong with that. But make sure you have make sure you have the things you need just in case. And talk about medicines, some some extra food, you know, uh, uh, emergency supplies, and whatever way you know, band aids, stuff like that. Even just like Tylenol and and um, you, you know the little, little hydration packets if you need it. Just really anything, ammo. If you can be, I know that's that's a little doomsday preppery, but I'm not against having a a, a a supply of a crap load of ammo. There's nothing wrong with that. And you want you like to shoot? Who cares? But it's good to have a backup. You never know. What if zombies? What if there's zombies and you got to start killing zombies? <laughs> Which is basically what the left is anyway. Sorry, uh, they they are kind of they are pretty much brainless zombies. But you know maybe you got to kill them. Then you're gonna need you're gonna. Well, I don't know. I was actually been, I've actually been watching The Walking Dead again, and you probably don't want a gun in that situation because if you do start shooting at zombies, then you know they're going to hear it and then they're going to come after you. So, what did Daryl have? Daryl had like a crossbow. Get a crossbow. Oh, I would love to have a crossbow. They sell crossbows at 
the store? Like I go to Walmart and get a crossbow. I need one of those. <laughs> anyway, you know, that's a great thing to have as a backup supply. You, you, uh, one of your in your supply kit in case shit pops off. Again, I'm not talking about f- full doomsday prepper, but hey, if you want to go that route, go right ahead. Just make sure you have all the things you need. Have a plan with your family. Where, where, you know, like, where'd you go if, if thing, where are you guys going to meet up if things get crazy or whatever, if, they, if, this, if there's a dangerous situation, where are you guys going to go? You know, and honestly, this is just solid advice in general. If you think about it, if there's any sort of emergency situation, whether it's an earthquake, a flood, tornado, any of that type of stuff, it's good to have that, that backup plan. You know, you got to be able to stay connected to your family. So how, how are you guys going to connect how are you going to reach out to the people you trust the most because communication is going to be the key if things start to unravel you know i was thinking about my situation where you know I, my daughter is with me 50 percent of the time and then she's with this is a week with me and, and then a week with her mom and it just goes back and forth like that and when when she's not here and she's at her mom she, it's kind of hard to get a hold of her yeah she she has a cell phone but you know she's doing stuff with her mom she can't always get back to me and stuff and i get it i don't want to interrupt their time um but if there's an emergency and maybe cell phones go down, what now? Do I? I'm, so I'm over here like, maybe I gotta buy some walkie talkies because I mean, she's just over in the town over. So if I got walkie talkies that had like a, I don't know, a ten mile radius or whatever, I might be able to. We might be able to connect. I might get some. I know it sounds crazy, but I gotta stay connected to my daughter. I would lose my mind if shit was going down and I had no way to get in touch with her and make sure that she was safe if she wasn't here with me. Now, obviously, I'd rather her be here with me. Uh, but if, if 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 the world goes nuts and she's at her mom's, then what am I going to do? Of course, I'm going to drive over there to see if I can find her. I'm going to be all over the place. Trust me, I, I will go absolutely crazy. Luckily, during this year, during the election, she's going to be here. <laughs> so if shit pops off, she'll be at my house, so I'll be able to protect her. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, so you want to be able to, to to have that communication. So you got you got to figure out a plan, an an emergency plan. And again, this is not not so far fetched. It's like I shouldn't be this kind of crazy, Mike. You're talking out your ass. No, this is something that you should be preparing for anyway. Because there's we live in an earthquake zone. We live in an area where there you, there's deadly fires and stuff like that. So you should just just be prepared if things start to unravel, you know? And and honestly, maybe most importantly above all this, don't just rely on what the mainstream media is feeding you. I say this all the time, like the mainstream media is full of crap. They 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 they're just the communications arm of the government. It doesn't matter if it's Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, it does not matter. OK, they're mainstream media. They're not going to give you the full truth. So make sure you dig a little bit deeper. OK, and make sure you support independent voices. Yeah, I'm talking about people like me, but also the countless other creators out there who aren't afraid to speak the truth. Look, Joe Rogan had Donald Trump on, on his podcast the other day and it was fantastic. Wow. Oh. I, I'm, I, yeah, he's a creator. He has always been speaking the truth. And, and a lot of people have their feelings about Joe Rogan or whatever. But from thinking about 2020 to now he's continually can he's been right about a lot of things and he's had a lot of people on his show who have been right about a lot of things um and so i i would support those independent voices to, is he independent sort of kind of but i am you got to support independent media it is extremely important i was to mentioned to him having trump on his podcast but i also wanted to point out that he did ask Kamala Lama Ding Dong to be on his podcast too. She hasn't said no, um, but she has sort of counter offered saying, yeah, we'll be on it, but it, you've got to come to me. I'm not coming to you. And it can only be an hour. Whereas Trump's like, I'm going to go straight to your studio and we're going to talk as long as we need to. It went three hours with Trump. Could you imagine three hours with Kamala Lama Ding Dong? No. God, I would, that's, that would drive me crazy. Uh, drive me crazy. But anyway, support independent media, support independent voices. Make sure that's probably who you're going to for most of your information. Look, we don't have corporate overlords breathing down our necks, telling us what the narrative is and what narratives to push. So my point here is, is check different sources. Even if you don't agree with everything they say, it's the only way you're going to be able to get the full picture of what's really going on. Now, let me, let me wrap this whole thing up with, with some perspective because this isn't about fear mongering. It's not what I'm trying to do. This is about understanding the full scope of what's happening. 
Okay. If you want to think about the bigger picture here, it, the country is on edge. Okay. Political tensions are at an all time high and a government, we have a government that's quietly adjusting its playbook. Okay. It doesn't take a genius to see why people are suspicious. And honestly, I'm right there with you guys. All right. The timing, the language, the implications, it all feels a little sus as the kids would say, skibbity Ohio political games or something. I don't know. It's what are the, I don't know what these words are that they're using, but it feels like a game. All right. Uh, and here's the thing. We can protect ourselves by paying attention and asking the right questions. And if there's one thing that I've learned in this, the more they try to explain things away, the more you should really dig in, all right? The government's out here saying, oh, this directive just th doesn't mean that we're coming after you. They're probably coming after you, okay? Because if history is any indicator, when they start denying something that hard, it's usually time to read the fine print. And that's exactly what we did here on this episode today. That's exactly what we've done. We've laid out the fine print for you, highlighted the red flags, and asked, what the hell is happening now? So where does that leave us? Well... We're staring down an election that could tip either way. And no matter the outcome, somebody's going to be unhappy. And that unhappiness, that could turn into unrest, which could turn into chaos in the streets. And I'm talking about real chaos. And if that happens, don't be surprised when those in power start leaning on directives like this one in order to answer their questions of what should we do. Because it's really not about what the rules say. It's how they get interpreted. And they've got a lot of practice in bending those interpretations when it needs to suit them. But it's life, right? This is, we've been dealing with this our entire lives. The government has been bending the interpretations forever. So it's not really all doom and gloom, all right? And I'm not about, I mean, it's not about living in fear. It's about living prepared. It's about being smart. It's about staying informed and not letting the narrative control you. And that's why I do this show, to give you the information they'd rather you not have, to connect the dots that they'd rather keep hidden. And look, if you appreciate what I'm doing here and what we're doing here and what other content creators are doing, there's one simple thing you can do. And I've already said it, and I'm going to say it again. Support independent media. Not just my show, but all the voices who are putting the truth out there, even if it's inconvenient or uncomfortable. Head on over to MikeyPodcast.com or on Spotify. Join the sub club and keep this thing going, dude. It's less than 10 cents a day. Your support keeps this podcast free from the corporate agenda, free from the bullshit, and most importantly, free for everyone who needs to hear it. Share this episode with your friends, post about it, spread the word, because the more people who know the truth, the less power they have over us. All right, follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, X, YouTube, Rumble, all the things, you name it, I'm there. All the links that you need are in the description of this in every episode of the Mikey Podcast. And if you've got thoughts, questions, or you just want to sort of rant about things or vent about all, the, all this stuff that's crazy that's going on around us, sure, hit me up, man. I'm down to talk. Let's keep this conversation alive and going because if we don't, other people, nobody's going to. All right, that's it for today, my friends. So as always, stay safe, stay weird, and remember, question everything. See ya. The Mikey Podcast.